Hi there. Now here we have a vectors question which I'll read through and at any point you might want to pause the video. When you come back I'll give you the numerical solutions then to three, these three parts A, B and C. And after that I'll take you through my work solutions. So what we've got here then is that in this question the horizontal unit vectors I and J are directed due east and due north respectively. And the velocity v meters per second of a particle p at time t seconds is given by the vector v equals 1 minus 2t in the i direction plus 3t minus 3 in the j direction. And we've got to find for part a the speed of p when t equals 0 for 3 marks. And then in part b, find the bearing on which p is moving when t equals 2 for 2 marks. And for part c, find the value of t when p is moving, first of all, parallel to j. And then in the second part here, parallel to the vector minus i minus 3j for 6 marks. So if you'd like to uh, pause the video then and have a go at this, when you come back, I'll give you the numerical solutions to these three parts and after that you can check your work solutions against mine. Okay welcome back then if you had a go. So the numerical solutions then for part A it's root 10 meters per second, B 315 degrees, C part 1 half and C part 2, 2 thirds. So I'll show you now how I went about solving these. Now in part A we've got to find the speed then of P when T equals 0 and speed is given as the magnitude of our velocity vector. So I just need to first of all find out what that velocity vector is when T equals 0. So if we substitute 0 into here for t, we end up with v equaling simply 1i, or just i, and then we've got minus 3j. And so if I was to represent this vector, then we're going 1 unit to the east and 3 units south. Okay, so that velocity vector v would be like this. That would be v. This would be one unit here. This would be three units. And we can get the magnitude of v, the speed in other words, just by using Pythagoras' theorem. So therefore the speed would be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of these two sides. So it would be the root then of 1 squared plus 3 squared. All we do is we just square the components here. You can neglect the negative 3 there. And you end up with 1 plus 9 is 10, which will be then the root of 10. Square root of 10 meters per second. OK, so moving on then to part B. Find the bearing on which P is moving when T equals 2. So let's see what we get when t equals 2. Put here when t equals 2. What's v going to be? Well v will equal 1 minus 4 here which will give us negative 3. Negative 3 in the i direction and when t equals 2 here we'll have 6 minus 3 which is 3 plus 3j. So if I was to sketch a diagram for this it looks something like this. I would have thought, let's just have a north line down here. And this velocity vector minus 3 in the i direction, so that's going to be going out here. 3 units that way, plus 3j, so that would be 3 in the northerly direction. So our velocity vector then when t equals 2 is going in that direction. This is 3 units, this is 3 units. So what we've got here is an isosceles triangle. And that would mean that this angle in here must be 45 degrees. So 
when it comes to the bearing, what we need to do is just give this angle all the way around to there. So it's going to be 270 degrees for three quarters of a turn plus an additional 45 degrees. And so that bearing then is going to be 315 degrees. Okay. Now we move on to the next part, part C. So we'll just come down here. And for the first part of C, we've got to find the value of T then when P is moving parallel to the vector J. Well, if it's moving parallel to the vector J, I would expect the velocity to be something J. In other words, there'll be no I component. So the I component must be zero. So let's just put that here, that the I component must equal zero. So therefore, that means that 1 minus 2t must equal zero. And so therefore, just rearranging this, add 2t to both sides, 2t would equal 1, divide both sides by 2, and t would equal 1 half. So after half a second then, we see that the particle P is moving parallel to J. Now we move on to the last part here. This is a bit more involved. For C part 2 then, when is the particle moving this time parallel to this vector, minus i minus 3j? Well, if it was moving parallel to this vector, then I would expect this velocity vector to be a multiple of this vector. So what I'm saying then is if we copy the velocity vector down here, that is we've got 1 minus 2t in the i direction, plus 3t minus 3 in the j direction, then I would have this equaling a multiple of this vector. I'll call that multiple lambda. And then it would be minus i minus 3j. And what I do now is I compare my components. The i components must be the same and the j components must be the same. And I'm going to create two simultaneous equations, which I should be able to find out what t is. So let's have a look at the i components first of all. What have we got for those? Well, we've got 1 minus 2t here, 1 minus 2t, and that is equal to the i component over here, which will be minus lambda. Now, knowing that I'm going to be using simultaneous equations, I'm just going to give myself a little space here so I can see what the other equation will be when I compare the j components. So comparing the j components, we've got 3t minus 3, 3t minus 3 will equal minus 3 lambda. Now there's many ways that we can solve simultaneous equations, but I can see that if I was to take this equation now and multiply it by 3, I'd create minus 3 lambda, which will be the same as this, and then I'll be able to eliminate minus 3 lambda. So that's the method I'm going to use. I'm going to multiply this equation by 3. And if that's the case, then I'm going to get 3 minus 6t equals minus 3 lambda. OK, we'll just say, therefore, we get that. And I can number my equations now. This one is 1, and this one is equation 2. And if I do, say, equation 2 minus equation 1, let's just put this down here, 2 minus 1, what do we get? Well, we've got 3t here minus minus 6t, so that's going to be 9t. And then we've got minus 3 minus another 3, so that's minus 6, equals, and then minus 3 lambda minus minus 3 lambda gives us 0. And if I add 6 to both sides, I therefore have 9t equals 6, dividing both sides now by 9, I end up with t equaling 6 ninths 
or that reduces down to two thirds. Okay, 